When turbocharging or supercharging your naturally aspirated engine, you need to add a new type of sensor called a boost sensor. And so this is essentially a pressure sensor which measures pressure above atmospheric. So it's a gauge sensor. And this compares to a different type of pressure sensor that may or may not be used on your engine called a vacuum sensor. And this measures pressures below atmospheric. So on a naturally aspirated engine, generally the intake pressures will be at or less than atmospheric. And this is because the engine's sucking in air. For a boosted application, when you turbocharge or supercharge your engine, you're forcing more air, air into the intake tract and you're boosting the pressure above atmospheric. So you need a pressure sensor that is able to measure gauge pressure above atmospheric. And so this is called a boost sensor. So I'll be doing this in the near future for my Mark I Toyota MR2. Um, this car did have a supercharged uh, application, but my car is not supercharged, it's naturally aspirated. So I need to add a boost sensor. Now this doesn't necessarily mean that I need to add a Toyota spec sensor. I don't need to go out and buy one from a Supra or a later generation MR2. Um, lots of different cars um, have boost sensors that are applicable to, you know, whatever you're doing. All, all you need to know is what that sensor is outputting with a pressure input. So what I did is I built this test rig. I have a boost sensor from a second generation Mazda RX-7. I just had this handy and so I figured why not use this. Um, this boost sensor, as far as I can tell, has a maximum PSI reading of 17 to 17.5 PSI. I'm not planning on going any higher than that, so this should be fine. And uh, this way I don't have to buy another a new sensor. But the only thing is I can't find any documentation um, from the factory service manual from Mazda online. I can't find any documentation on how the, the voltage response of this sensor um, with a pressure input. So I built this test apparatus to, to input different pressures and then measure the voltage output. So the way the sensor works, let's zoom in here. The sensor is essentially a closed diaphragm. So in here there's a closed diaphragm with a set specific pressure on one side. And on the other side, um, the pressure in the intake tract is applied. So in this case, I'm just applying it through a silicon hose. And so the difference in pressure on both sides of, those, of that diaphragm is going to cause that diaphragm to deflect. And this will cause a voltage reading to be output. And so this sensor has uh, four pins. And as far as I can tell from the documentation I've been able to find online, there are two power pins. This is five volts. Uh, those are the red wires. And there is one signal out, which is the orange wire. And this is the voltage output, uh, re basically the reading uh, of the boost sensor. And then ground is the yellow wire. Now, the reason why there are two red wires is most likely because one is to power the boost sensor and the other one is most likely to output uh, a voltage to uh, a boost gauge. So the RX-7 um, has a boost gauge built into the, the dash cluster and so I think as far as I can tell that extra pin there is to output that voltage and give you a reading um, of the boost pressure as you're driving. So we have the boost pressure sensor mounted. Now we have a breadboard here just to, you know, tidy up our wires. Um, we have here a, a very accurate pressure um, regulator. So I don't want to hook up this, this uh, boost sensor just to my uh, compressor directly because the compressor is fairly crude uh, in terms of the precision of its pressure setting. You know, I want to know exactly what pressure is going into the sensor and what the voltage is out so that I can produce a nice graph and figure out the calibration for this particular sensor. So I went out and purchased this from McMaster Car. It is a uh, precision pressure uh, um, setter, a regulator. And so what you do is you hook up uh, one side to your uh, regular um, pressure compressor, air compressor, and then you can set the, the uh, pressure very precisely and you can see it here on this gauge. Uh, this one is from 0 to 30 psi so it'll work well with my uh, 17 psi 
maximum sensor. And then the, the, uh, the set pressure is output through the uh, output port here. Uh, and the way it does this is it has a, just a bleed valve, and so it bleeds off the excess pressure um, and only outputs um, what, it, what you set it to. The last uh, step here and the last piece of the puzzle is a Arduino. Um, so this is just a nice little board which can you can easily write a program or find one online to measure analog voltage. So I'll be graphing and measuring the voltage output of my sensor and this is the sensor input here. And also the, the Arduino is able to produce uh, 5 volts to, to power my, my sensor and it also has a nice ground there. So everything can be done on one board and the end result will be a nice graph. Um, I'll have voltage with pressure, so I can just draw it here. Voltage and pressure. And so most likely I'll have something that looks like this where I have uh, voltage and pressure and I can produce a calibration curve and then now when I you know program my ECU for my turbocharged application I know exactly uh, what parameters to put in for this particular boost gauge and this setup here I can use for any boost gauge so in the future if I need to, need to calibrate any other sensors I can just mount them up uh, attach the air compressor and then get to work and produce a calibration so fairly simple you don't need a lot of tools um, this regulator was the most expensive piece uh, if you have an Arduino lying around um, great. I mean, you don't really need one. You can also just use a multimeter if you'd like and hook it up to the pins. Um, but this just makes it a little bit more convenient and for plotting on the computer. So let's go ahead and do that and show you the result. All right, so we're in the lab. We've got everything hooked up. Um, the board has been hooked up um, to the computer through the USB. Um, I have the uh, air compressor here hooked up, providing the pressure to the miniature, uh, you know, precise uh, pressure gauge here where I can set the, pr the pressure going into the pressure sensor um, very accurately. And I have a little program running on the computer um, just for the Arduino, outputting the voltage in real time um, from the boost sensor. And so right now at zero PSI, it's outputting 2.26 volts. So I'm going to make an Excel sheet, increase the PSI by one each time, and measure the voltage here. And that will produce a nice curve uh, as a calibration curve. So it appears uh, this, this sensor outputs zero to five volts. And so at zero PSI, it's about half, 2.26. So this sensor actually does vacuum as well as uh, boost. Um, a vacuum would produce a, a voltage lower than 2.26, you know, down all the way to zero volts, which would probably be around uh, negative 17 psi, and then a uh, boost up to 17 psi would be uh, 5 volts. So let's go ahead and get this started and see what happens. All right, so we have the test going here. Uh, the air compressor is putting in, you know, just over uh, 40 psi and I'm able to set the pressure here with my uh, precise uh, uh, precision uh, pressure regulator. Um, so this one goes from 0 to 30 psi and I can adjust it here as you can see. Let me just get it going here. So you can see here I can adjust it fairly accurately um, from anywhere from 0 to 30. Now this sensor again was uh, rated at 17.5 according to the internet so I will be doing one PSI increments and so I've already completed the, the test, I've done it twice and the result here is a great linear plot um, Excel's linear fit gives an R-squared value of 0 0.9985 a perfect linear variation is R-squared value of 1 so this is almost perfectly linear which is really great the sensor is not damaged. Um, it has a linear response, which is what I wanted. And I just wanted to show you how this works. So what I do is uh, I go from 0 to 17 in 1 PSI increments. And as I change this, you can watch the voltage output. You can see how it jumps as I change the PSI with the pressure regulator. So it'll max out 
at 4.92. That was the maximum reading I could get. That was the saturated pressure. And this actually happened at 16.5 PSI. So not 17.5 like it was rated online, um, but 16.5. So it appears that there is a 1 PSI difference between what was, you know, um, quoted online and this, this sensor. Um, I don't know if that's just an error online, um, but this is what I'm actually physically measuring. So um, for the Mazda RX-7 Turbo 2 pressure boost gauge, uh, or sorry, boost sensor, the maximum is actually 16.5 psi. Now this sensor again has an offset of 2.26 volts at 0 psi, which means that atmospheric pressure. And so this, I expect this linear variation to continue into the vacuum range. This is when you have a pressure lower than atmospheric. Uh, I can't measure that with my current setup. Uh, with the air compressor I can only do uh, pressure above atmospheric. Um, but I, I'm going to assume that this linear variation continues down to, um, I'm going to guess, you know, minus 16.5 psi of vacuum. Um, so when I, I'm going to use this linear variation and extrapolate it for the vacuum since I can't actually measure it. And I'm doing this with, you know, a fair amount of confidence just based on this, such a high value uh, um, of linearity for this variation. Again, I did this twice. There was a slight change, um, mostly due to the fact that I'm changing the pressure with a, a mechanical valve, so getting it perfectly at the same value each time is really hard. Um, but there might be some you know, error or hysteresis in this sensor. So I'll take that into account and, and measure the error and the offset. Um, but again, the linear variation is really great. And what's really nice is that this whole Procedure took about five minutes, and you can easily easily swap out uh, different pressure sensors and easily um, calibrate them with the same setup once everything is you know ready to go. And I also just want to note that the program that I'm using for the Arduino, I took off the internet. It took me two minutes to find. It's just measuring the analog voltage in this one pin right here. That's all it's doing, and and plotting it. It's a very simple program that I basically borrowed from online, it took me two minutes to find, so you don't need to be a you know, really intense programmer to get this done, you just have to have the right components, get it all set up, and then finish up and create your plot. So as always, good luck and have fun.